so fulfilled the law of Christ. So fulfill the law of Christ. So what it's talking about here, when it says bear ye one another's burdens, that means bear ye one another's faults. You're going to find somebody that, that got potty mouths in the church because they don't, they're in process. So don't trip. They're human. God ain't through with them yet. They still in process. You're going to find someone that, 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 that had problems in their marital relationship. Don't trip. They're human. God ain't through with them yet. They still in process. You're going to find someone that's in and out and in and out. Don't trip. <laughs> Glory to God. Don't trip. A lot of times we get to tripping off of stuff in the church that's God's business. And instead of us being spiritual and restoring a one in the spirit of meekness, what did it say after meekness? Considering thyself, lest thy also be tempted. Considering yourself, lest I also be going through the same thing. I don't learn in my many years of trying to follow Christ that I realize that I'm still human. And that my mind is attacked by the enemy. But instead of people coming and lift you up, they want to tear you down. They don't want to support your ministry. Because they can't see what God sees in you. Jesus always look at a man's future. If he looked at us today, we, none of us would go to heaven. He always see us projected in the future. He always see us how we want to be. He always see our perfection, not our failure. Amen. Glory to God. So don't trip. They human. They gonna make mistakes. In this godly walk, they gonna do things that's not godly. Because they are in the process. They own the potter's wheel. They is being cooked in the oven. Sometimes they're going through a valley season. That is not time for you to trip off of their situation. That is a time for you to learn how to pray for them and how to lift up their hands and realize that, hey, yeah, they may be going through, but I may be going through tomorrow. Are you with me? Chapter, verse 2. Bear ye one another what? Bear ye one another burdens and also and so fulfill the law of Christ. So fulfill the law of Christ. What do we know the law of Christ is love? Read. For if a man think of himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Uh huh. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. So in other words, Paul is saying, examine your work. Take our time and check your life before you try to check my life. Examine where you at in the faith. Examine if you following all God's commands. Examine if you ain't in some kind of process. Glory to God. Some, some people talk about a person that smoke, that smoke uh, uh, cigarettes in the church, but yet they fornicate. <laughs> There's no difference. Both of them wrong. One defiling the body, the other defiling the body. But they're in the process. Sometimes people don't get miraculously delivered out of everything. Even as Jesus don't miraculously deliver everybody out of sicknesses, which that is true and we all know that is true, that ain't always mean that because you come to the Lord, you're going to be miraculously delivered out of your bondages. I know the pastor's going to say, well, the Bible says we completed Christ. Yes, Christ looked at us. He said, ye shall be saved. If thou wilt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do the commandments which I command thee this day, then, then these blessings going to come upon you. So what Romans says that, it says, if, if, you, if, if, if you come to the Lord and you give the Lord your heart, 
He said, with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So as you grow in the Lord, you begin to confess those things that you know that you have problems in. Those bondages that you know that you have difficulties overcoming or understanding. Amen. So when we look at the scripture, the Bible says, let every man prove his own work. In other words, mind your business. Learn how to pray for folk instead of talk about folk. Uh, they say, you want to give us some more background on this. Okay, let's go to Luke. Let's go to Luke. Uh, glory to God. Somebody say glory. glory. That don't sound too convincing. Somebody say glory. Glory. Amen. Go to Luke 6 and 37 through 42. To those that are following along, watching by video, we have Luke 6, 37 through 42. My reader has it. Read, please. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Uh-huh. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Uh-huh. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. The Bible says, when we just read in Galatians, it says, ye which are spiritual, restore. So we supposed to be in the body of Christ, restores, repairs of the breach. We're not supposed to be one that's cutting folks up and tearing them down and say, you ain't going to never live right. I knew you weren't going to live right. I knew you weren't saved in the first place. Just because we, just because that person, God has got them in a process. God has got them in the oven cooking them, and, and yet you want to destroy them. You, you like a, a, a cake destroyer. Glory to God. I remember when I was young, my mama was baking a cake, and she had one of those cakes that was high rise, and she told her, don't y'all be running through the house, because my cake will fall. So what happens is, is that the church is running over saints that are having problems and issues, and they're falling. And then now we got saints that don't even want to come to another saint and talk about the issues that concerns them because they're afraid of character assassination. Glory to God. I read it all the time, prominent preachers fall. What's happening in the body of Christ where we don't know how to restore? All we know how to do is cut up and blame and point fingers. Yes, he a pastor, but he's still a man. Don't trip. <laughs> I'm human. God isn't through to me yet. I'm still in process. I'm human. I may be a pastor, I may have a call in my life, I may be anointed with the word, but I'm still human. Somebody say human. Human. Glory to God. So the Bible tells us Jesus said this. Jesus said this. Judge not, and he shall not be judged. In other words, while you judging somebody else's life, Christ is judging your life. While you looking and trying to condemn somebody else, Christ is condemning your life. Glory to God. Read. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. So the, so the process is, is that we as Christians must learn how to forgive one another. Instead of in the church. You need to learn how to forgive that brother. You need to learn how to forgive that sister. So you can be forgiven. That's how deep this thing is. The Lord saying, if you judge it, I'm going to judge you. If you condemn it, I'm going to condemn you. And if you don't know how to forgive, I ain't going to forgive you. We're talking about the Lord Christ. Read verse 38. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Uh huh. Good measures, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that ye 
meet it, with the it shall be measured to you again. So what we're saying here is, that, you know, a lot of times prominent preachers use this scripture for the, the law of reciprocity, which is good. That it means that too. But there is a deeper law of this particular passage. This particular passage is talking about our ways and our attitudes, how we treat one another. If you do me right, I'm going to do you right. If you if you treat me right, I'm going to treat you right. If you learn how to talk about uh, talk to me right, then I'm going to talk I'm going to talk to you right. If you learn how to stop gossiping, then you ain't got to worry about nobody gossiping on you. Glory to God. Because that particular passage is right after judge not. So we knew that the intent of what Jesus was saying was not not about money alone, but it had a deeper meaning. It was talking about our relationship one toward another. If you know you still got issues, you ain't got no business sitting up in the church thinking about what somebody else don't do. Your, your, your job is to, the, the Bible says, prove your own work. Examine your own life. Don't be looking around and ask somebody else. I don't know why he, he up there preaching. I don't know why she a mother of the church. Because I remember when she was out there doing such and such, such and such. The problem is we remember it too much. Forgiveness means to forget. The Lord said, if you come to me, I will no wise cast you aside. And I will cast your sins in the sea of forgetfulness and remember it no longer. And if we call ourselves Christians, when somebody sin and they ask for forgiveness, they should forgive them. It's a sad thing that I was watching many, many years ago. When old Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky and how he was found out, he was lying, he knew he was doing inappropriate things in the White House. And after he was found out, he came and asked for forgiveness. And some, some of the prominent preachers wouldn't even come up there and accept that man and restore him. Glory to God. Now, I don't know too much about uh, Bill Clinton's life, nor Hillary Clinton for that aspect. But I'm showing you this as an example of how the church is character assassinating those when they got.